lived in uh, Lac Sul now for a few years. I was considered off reserve for most of my life and I managed to come back to my band with my four children that I'm raising here in, uh, in Lac Sul now. Right now, Canada is kind of like our big brother uh, that we have to ask uh, for permission to conduct any kind of uh, development. It can take up to two years to get approval from uh, Indian Affairs Canada. And I understand that uh, with this new Lac Sul, uh, I mean with this land code, it'll take, uh, it'll reduce that two years down to like, uh, like 30 days. I would like to introduce uh, my own businesses. I, like, uh, I'm a tattoo artist, artist, slash chef. Uh, people need to be educated with uh, what the land code is and what it means because everyone is going to have a, a vote. Chief and council uh, will, you know, be our government. A lot of this uh, Anishinaabe worldview and teachings connect right back to the things that we're trying to do for our people. Before contact, it was like a Garden of Eden here. That's what I've been uh, told. And uh, I know that my teachers and elders are telling the truth. Listen to our elders so that we can um, take on that information and pass it to, uh, to our children and, 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 and keep it going that way because that's the way that uh, it's always been and that's the way it's going to continue to be. It doesn't matter what... Uh, the government tries to make laws. The information is still being passed on. When we're talking about the future and our future generations, we're talking about the land and the environment. I harvest from the land, whether it's animals, fish from the water, or medicines. That's the way I uh, take care of my family. And uh, these are the things that we uh, pass along to the next generation. Black Soul does have uh, an overall population somewhere in around 3,600 to um, 3,700. In the community, we're probably just under a thousand, a thousand people. The end goal is, I know for most First Nations, is to be self-governing. And you know, what better way is to start with uh, managing our own lands. The more and more I learned, it's uh, about um, land management, not necessarily like getting into the Land Management Act, but just um, trying to better prepare the community of getting, you know, controlling the lands ourselves rather than, you know, being um, a part of a system already that's in place by, um, by INAC or Canada. I know it's gonna take some time to um, educate, to reach out to our people, to um, understand this land code. And this is not a chief and council decision. Um, this is a decision if the people want this law, it's gonna be ratified by the members. My uh, name is uh, Raymond Anjuganep and uh, I've served as a band counselor for, this is my fifth term. And uh, I'm from Lac Sul First Nation. I've had the privilege of about living in all four, four communities in, uh, in Lac Sul First Nation. I think uh, the land code to me is uh, very important. We've always been under the, the Indian Act, and if we can do away some of the, the sections of the Indian Act, I think that would be good. We can start managing our own lands and resources in our, in our First Nation here. 
you know, I've had the privilege of going to West Bank, uh, BC, and I've seen uh, how uh, advanced the community is over there. Better housing in our community is something that we need. Uh, the houses that I normally visit in my uh, area over there, you know, there's multiple generations living in each house. Housing is a shortage, a shortage of housing all the time. I think, uh, you know, being uh, caretakers of the land, we need to take better care of it. Personally, I feel that uh, I think I'm in support of the land code. We need to move forward. My name is Chief Clifford Bull, Maxwell First Nation. I want to talk this morning about the land code. The land code is a, a basic law that we are going to be implementing in the very near future. It deals with uh, replacing 44 land management sections of the Indian Act, about 33%. The land code reflects our culture, traditions, and customs. By doing this, you're creating your own destiny for your members. The Indian Act, as you know, is a very archaic, oppressive document, and um, we need to, to either do away with the Indian Act, abolish it, at the very least, renegotiate a modern day treaty with Canada. Back in 1929, our lands were flooded by a hydro project. 11,000 acres of our lands went under. And later on, our lands were destroyed by timber cutting in our reserve. We can benefit through economic opportunities, partnerships, even looking at um, cottage lot development on our lands, because tourism in Laksul is, is very prominent. It's, it's, a, it's one of the biggest industries in our region. So to me, when you talk about land codes, it empowers our nation to, to uh, begin looking after you, the land yourself and deciding what you want done with the land. And to me, taking ownership is a big step for creating self-resilience and sustainability in our communities and prosperity. That's, so that, to me, that's important. We're hopeful that uh, the membership can, uh, will side with uh, Chief and Council's wishes and approve, ratify the uh, land code that we'll be submitting to the federal government sometime this fall. The lands around Lac Sul have sustained, sustained us and looked after us for many generations. We lived off our land, we lived on the land. One of the things that the elder told me that I've always, that I've heard, which was very important to me was that land, you cannot own land. The land owns you. Because when you die, the land devours you back into the earth, dust to dust. So how can you possibly say that you own land? And that's where you're gonna be when, when, when we're done our time on earth. <laughs>